Hello and uh, welcome to the first ever and likely the only ever installment of DIY Parliament with uh, Daniel Blakey, me, your member of Parliament for Elmwood Transcona. I was really uh, honoured to learn uh, today that uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, April 28th, uh, I'll be among the first New Democrats to get to ask a question in the uh, virtual Parliament that's been set up in response to the pandemic. Of course, it's uh, quite difficult to, uh, to get 338 MPs from all across uh, Canada assembled in one room to ask questions of the government and hold them to account while still observing all of the public health orders that are in place at this time. So the virtual parliament was a kind of compromise position that the NDP uh, proposed between uh, conservatives who were interested in having the House of Commons meet uh, often more, far more often in person and, uh, and, and the Liberals who, uh, who initially were arguing for, for less meetings overall. And uh, why we thought as a party that this was really important was to ensure that when the House is sitting, it's not just Ottawa area uh, MPs that are having the opportunity to raise the concerns of their constituents, but that MPs across the country uh, are able to continue to represent their constituents and their concerns directly to government in an official way that's on the record. Now, ever since the crisis began, there's been a lot of hard work, uh, certainly here in the riding, and, uh, and a big shout out to my staff who've been working really hard to hear the concerns of people in Elma Transcona and to make as much information as we can available, uh, both to people in general, but also um, to people who reach out to us who, who've, been, who've been struggling, either from a health perspective or from an economic perspective. And I think this crisis has really shown that in, in a lot of ways, um, Canada has huge gaps in its social safety net um, uh, and, our, and our healthcare system. And there's gonna be a lot of work to do coming out of this crisis to make sure that we're not just trying to get back to normal because that was already leaving a lot of people behind, but that coming out of this, uh, we can have a stronger sense of solidarity that we can really absorb the lesson that when, uh, when we're looking out for each other, uh, we're at our best and we're most safe when our neighbors are safe as well as us and uh, build, a better, build a better normal coming out of this. So that part of that work has to do with the virtual parliament. And uh, uh, normally I don't participate in parliamentary meetings from my home office and I haven't normally done a lot of video conferencing, certainly been doing a lot of phone conferencing over the last number of months uh, with caucus and, and, uh, and in negotiations with uh, government, but this is going to be on video. So I just wanted to make a nice neutral backdrop uh, that will hide the uh, home office that's, you know, been under renovation for some time and uh, just give a nice neutral uh, background and, and thought uh, folks might appreciate a kind of behind the scenes look at what is happening in at least one riding in the country to prepare for the new virtual parliament. So uh, bear with me, please. So the good news is, is that a lot of politicians have spare materials that could work well for a backdrop laying around. Um, here you have some signposts from the last election a larger than life uh, Daniel Blakey sign from the last election as well, which will not be the backdrop, don't worry. Uh, normally in the House of Commons, there's no props allowed and that will be true for the virtual parliament as well. And so this would most definitely be an inappropriate prop. Uh, the rules against that are right and good. Um, you know, otherwise you have uh, some people who will try and exploit the House of Commons or the virtual House of Commons to make, uh, you know, just sort of unimpressive uh, attempts at self-promotion uh, that lack the dignity that the institution deserves. I'm, I'm, you know, it's reminiscent of Pierre Polyev in the lead up to the 2015 election, making a government announcement with taxpayer funds wearing a Conservative Party t-shirt. Uh, we just don't want that kind of stuff going on. I think it debases the currency of politics. So we're going to flip that around. It's why we're not using one of those election signs, which might be a slightly better size. I'm going to cut down the larger one and I'm going to use its blank reverse side as the backdrop. I've already ripped down, I, I uh, built a fence for my yard last summer. 
Uh, I've ripped down some of the uh, remaining fence boards that I had and uh, I'm gonna cut up this larger piece here uh, just to kind of be the base of two different uh, stands, if you will, uh, and use the sign post just as a diagonal piece. All right, so now that I've cut that two by six into two three foot lengths and I've got my six foot uh, fence boards, I'm just going to uh, screw them into the edge of the two by six here and uh, let's get in the right position here. So that's effectively how I'm going to do it. And then when I'm done, I'm going to have two 90 degree stands and then we're just gonna uh, brace them. So instead of, uh, you know, uh, having you watch through all of that and potentially embarrassing myself uh, and subjecting you to some of the colorful expressions that sometimes occur when I'm doing construction work, I will uh, pause the video now and uh, come back to you once this bit of work is done. All right, so now that we've got our 90 degree angle, the next piece is going to be to use a sign stake just to offer a little bit of bracing. All right, so now we've got a couple of stands. They're upstairs in the office. We've got our core glass cut. We've got a stapler. And the next step is just to hang this up on the stand, staple them in, and then uh, test to make sure that when the camera's on, uh, we've got a nice white background. And we're just going to put in two staples for now in case it's not actually working well and uh, then it'll be easy to take off we can readjust try again so i'm going to do a little bit of that test make sure it works and then uh, after that there is a piece de resistance uh, that i'll let you in on uh, very shortly once we got this worked out so here we are. I was definitely a little over optimistic about the extent to which the printing on the other side of the sign would not bleed through onto the white side. So you'll see I've also put up a sheet. Uh, if you see some clip from the proceedings tomorrow and this is a different color in the background, you'll know it's because I had to change it out just to make sure uh, I didn't effectively have an election sign in the background despite my best intentions. So we are gonna cover that up uh, one way or another. Um, I promised a piece de resistance that is coming. In the meantime, what we've got is a stand that when it's taken apart is really easy just to push off to the other side. It's only really got two staples in it, so uh, you wouldn't want to take a run at it, but it's going to be easy to disassemble and reassemble, and I'm extending the life of one of these large core blast election signs that uh, come with the territory, but uh, but aren't really recyclable. So this is a nice way to get a little bit more life out of one of these signs. I'm going to come back with that piece de resistance that I promised. And so the final piece of this setup for, uh, for the Virtual House of Commons comes from just down the street where the uh, former parliamentary leader, longtime house leader of the New Democratic Party, Bill Blakey, lives. Uh, so on loan from him, I have a gift that he got when he left federal politics after just about 30 years of service uh, in the NDP caucus and in the House of Commons on behalf of people in Northeast Winnipeg. The caucus of the day bought for him one of the chairs from the House of Commons. And so um, he's loaned that to me so that for the first time, when a question is asked of the government from in Transcona, we'll have a little piece of the House of Commons right here in Transcona that will make me feel a little bit more at home uh, as if I'm really there in the House of Commons. This is an authentic House of Commons uh, seat that's been with the family now ever since my dad left federal politics in 2008 and while it's not quite as ergonomically correct as the office chair uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty neat. And so tomorrow, I'm really honored to be asking questions uh, on behalf of the NDP in the first virtual parliament and speaking on behalf and taking a lot of what we've been hearing in the writing from folks and uh, putting questions directly to government about how they've been handling the crisis. And uh, to be doing that from a seat from the House of Commons 
right from Transcona is a, is a pretty special thing. So thank you for bearing with me through what I'm sure has been an extraordinarily long video. Uh, 